This is a NAE's Interlibrary Loan System training video on using lists. This video is focused on the use of lists by staff at New Hampshire State Libraries. There is a video about patron-initiated interlibrary loan, which covers how patrons who have been authenticated through SIP2 can use the list functionality in the system as well. For today's video, I will be working as the Lilac Public Library. As you can see, I'm already logged in to the interlibrary loan account for the Lilac Public Library. The system supports lists for each login account that has been created. So each library has uh, login accounts that were sent to their director, and each individual login, in this case NHTLILILL, -L -L, has a set of lists that they can create and manage. The lists are shared across individual logins, so if you, multiple people in your library use the same login, which is the case in nearly every library in the state, then you will need to share the lists. In order to access your lists, you go to this little icon up at the top that looks like a bunch of lists. The number that is indicated here, in the, this case it's a five, is not how many items, but how many separate lists have been created for this particular login. To access the lists, I just click on the icon and my set of lists will appear. The one that will show up by default is whichever one is first alphabetically in the list. So at this point, this particular login has five lists created for it. They're sorted by alphabetical order by name. Um, this library has set up lists for cataloging purposes so that individual staff members can keep track of their own cataloging material, as well as some lists for other um, collection development purposes and planning story times. You can use the lists for anything that is useful to your library, and you can have many different lists created. There are a couple of ways that you can create lists, and I'm going to walk you through your various choices, both to create them and to manage them, and how to add things to them. The simplest way to create a list is to come to the list manager, as we have done, and enter the name of a list here in the box. I'm going to create a list called Cataloging DH, and click Save and it creates a new list for me. It has no things in it because I've just basically created a shell of the list, but it is now there. In order to add things to a list, either an existing one or a new one, I have a couple of options. Let's go back to the home screen. So we're kind of starting new, and we'll do a search here for squids. Those of you who've been watching these videos will see that we're very fond of squids here in NAS services. So in order to add an item um, to a list, I just have to find the item. Here's a new addition, it looks like, or at least a new cover, of Squids Will Be Squids. From this main results page, I have a button that says List. If I click on that, I will open up a list of my lists and can add this book to any of the lists that exist. Let's add it to Cataloging DH that I just created. So now Cataloging DH contains this new cover for Squids Will Be Squids. In addition, I can add to an existing list from within a particular record. So let's take a look at, uh, let's go with this Squids book. If I go to the actual details page of the record, I have an add to your list link here on the left hand side. If I click on that link, that same dialog comes up on the right hand side. I choose the list that I want to add it to, and my item is added. Let's go back now to our search results. And in addition to adding to an existing list, I also have the option if I go to a book and I add to my list, and this would be true whether I did it directly from the search results or from the details page, I can create a new list here. So I can make a squids list by typing the title of my new list into the box 
and clicking this plus sign to create the list. So what has now happened is a list called squids has been created and squirting squids has been added to it. So now we've seen different ways to create the lists and to add the lists add to the list that we have created. Let's take a look now at some options for managing the lists once they exist. So I've gone back to my to your lists. Um, sometimes it's called my lists in some of the documentation, sometimes it's your list. They're just lists, either name basically means the same thing. My list, your list, whoever's list. So to manage lists, we work from the list page and we can manage any specific list by choosing it from this list on the left. There's a lot, the word list comes up a lot in this training. So let's say we want to do something with our um, cataloging DH list. So I click on that list and that displays um, all of the things that are on the list over here and gives me the ability to take action on these different items. One of the things that I can do is I can move an item from a specific list to a different one. So if I want to move squids uh, from the cataloging DH list to the squids list, I just choose it there and the item moves and it tells me up here oh, that it has moved and I can say OK or that will go away after a minute. I also have the option to delete a specific item on a list. So I can do that with um, this little button that says delete next to the item. And it says, do you wish to delete this? And I say, OK, and it deletes it. So I have now moved one squid book and deleted the other from the cataloging DH list. I can also delete an entire list using this little trash can. So I can delete this list um, because there's nothing on it anyway. Uh, if I want to, I can do that with clicking the little trash can. It says, am I sure? I say yes. And now that list is deleted. And I am back down to having six lists instead of seven. So the other way that I can manipulate lists is, let's go look at the story time ideas list this time. Um, I can take action on some but not all of the items. So on, this, on the cataloging DH list, we saw ways to act on one item at a time. But I can also act on uh, groups of items within a single list. So this button here will select all the things in the list. And then I can unselect specific ones. Or I can clear all of my check marks and just choose some specific ones that I want to work with. So whichever things are checked, however you get them checked, those are the ones that your actions will apply to when you use these buttons across the top. So I can move everything that is selected to a particular list. Let's move these um, books to the cataloging CM list. I can also delete items from the list, so we'll check the rest of them. I can delete them using the delete button. And it says, am I sure? And I'm going to say, no, I'm not sure, and cancel so those don't go away. I can print them. When I print them, my browser is going to pop up the printing. And in this case, my browser decided to be fussy and not let me do that. But what will happen is your whatever browser you're using will pop up a print dialog and you can print the items. I can also email the things I have checked by, by clicking on the email button. When I do that, I can change the from information. So I can change this to my name. Spelling my name right would be good. The from address is this no reply at autographics. It must remain as it is. If you change it, then the mailing doesn't work. So at least may not work. So definitely leave that as it is. Don't change it. Just go with it. It's the from. The to address, you will put in who you want to send your email to. If you want to carbon copy or blind copy somebody, you can do that. The default uh, subject heading is your list items, but we can change it to how about these for story time Friday. And then I click the send button. And I send my, I will have sent an email to the address I filled in here um, with these records attached to it. And then I can close the box here by clicking anywhere outside of it and that will make it go away. The 
Remaining op options that I have here are to save um, the items. If I'm saving the items, I can save them to a text file or a tab delimited file or in these other files. The most useful way to save them is as a mark download. So I choose mark download and click save and my browser will open up a dialog box that lets me set um, whatever things I need to do. So I could just open it with my mark editor. I can save it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save the file and it will go to somewhere on my PC and I click save. And those things are driven by the configuration of your specific browser. I'm using Firefox. It's set up to to default to asking me where I want to go with my information. Some browsers automatically default to a download folder, but whatever yours is configured to do, that's what it's going to do because that is where that is controlled. It has nothing to do with the ILL system. Okay, my remaining option for how I can act on a batch of things is that I can move all of the selected things. Just like I could move them individually, I can also move everything that's checked to another list by um, choosing it. So I'm going to go back to the cataloging CM and take these children's books that I just moved and move them back to my Storytime Ideas list. So Storytime Ideas now has its four things back again that it had when we started. So that's how you can act on items in the lists as groups, individually on the side of each item or as groups by choosing them with the check boxes. So this has been an overview of using lists in the NAES Interlibrary Loan System. If you have questions about any of this, please contact the NAES Help Desk at 603-271-2141 or send us an email at the address on your screen. Thank you for watching.